welcome to the fifth episode of The Greats of British Art. So far we've looked at portraits, self-portraits, animal paintings, but today we're going to take a look at some mystical art by exploring the creativity of William Blake. Blake lived through the Georgian period and was a contemporary of Reynolds and Gainsborough, but his approach to art was very different. For Blake, the imaginative and the spiritual was much more powerful than any of the theories being put forward by the Royal Academy of Art and its president, Sir Joshua Reynolds. William Blake was born on the 28th of November, 1757, and lived until the 12th of August, 1827. He was a painter, printmaker and poet who died in obscurity, but has since gained admiration for his creative output. Blake lived through the Age of the Enlightenment, which favoured the rational and the objective over the spiritual and the subjective. As a consequence, Blake was at odds with his time period. He had visions throughout his life, right from his childhood through to his death. It is recorded that at the age of four, Blake had his first vision when he saw the face of God peering through the window of his house. A few years later in Peckham Rye, William Blake saw a tree filled with angels. Later in life, he is quoted as saying, a fool sees not the same tree as a wise man sees. William Blake believed that the mystical visions that he saw all around him were accessible to everyone, but that most people had shut themselves off from this type of wisdom. He believed that the spiritual and the material realm coexisted and influenced each other. Many of Blake's contemporaries considered him to be eccentric or even mad due to the visions that he had and the unorthodox beliefs that he held. But these visions and beliefs, which ostracised him from many, would prove to be the essence of his creative output. In 1772, Blake began a seven-year apprenticeship with the engraver James Bazir. In addition to developing his technical skills, Blake was encouraged to learn from the artists of the past and visited Westminster Abbey to sketch the sculptural forms and the objects within the building. The solid forms of the effigies, in combination with Blake's admiration for Michelangelo's approach to depicting the human form, shaped some of the stylistic approaches to picture making that would endure throughout Blake's life. Concurrently, Blake was also interested in ancient history, druids and notions of Britain as Albion. Out of these concepts and influences, Blake was able to develop a unique religious iconography of his own. We are now going to explore some of William Blake's feelings towards the Enlightenment by analysing his depiction of Newton. The scientific focus on a rational, logical understanding of the world was one that left very little room for the more transcendent understanding of reality held by Blake. And for the artist, the person that symbolised this cold approach more than any other was Isaac Newton. William Blake was recorded as describing science as the tree of death. This is in direct contrast to art, which he described as the tree of life. Blake also stated, may God keep us from single vision and Newton's sleep. He believed that the prioritisation of rational science above all else to be a dangerous development. Consequently, this Newtonian denial of the immaterial and the visionary aspects of life led to the scientist being criticised through both words and the pictorial form by William Blake. In this print, we see the solid form of Newton leaning forward. He looks like a marble sculpture from antiquity. Newton's face is held in deep concentration as he scrutinises the piece of parchment in front of him. His feet hold it in place to stop it coiling up. In this way, he's using his material form to keep his scientific quest open. Newton's left hand clutches a compass, which represents his attempts to measure and record the objective world. The compass is an object that appears in other artworks by Blake, and the connotation appears to be a negative one. In the Ancient of Days, a larger compass extends from the fingers of Urizen, another name for God in the book of Daniel. In this image, God is not a benign God of compassion, but instead 
plays the dual role of humankind's creator and oppressor. There is an expression of fury on God's countenance. Blake had many conflicting views regarding religion. He was certainly a believer, but he was very opposed to the church establishment and to some of its key teachings, which he felt were designed to restrain and suppress its followers. Elohim creating Adam is another artwork by Blake that confronts this unflattering view of God and religion. Elohim is a Hebrew name for God. The artwork illustrates the passage and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, which appears in the book of Genesis. In reference to this artwork, the Tate Gallery state that, for Blake, the God of the Old Testament was a false God. He believed the fall of man took place not in the Garden of Eden, but at the time of creation showed here, when man was dragged from the spiritual realm and made material. In many ways, Blake was every bit as concerned about religious orthodoxy as he was about scientific certainty. Both, he felt, were oppressive forces that were designed to control the more vital aspects of human understanding. In Blake's art, the motif of the compass, whether wielded by God or Newton, symbolises a reduction of experience and a closing down of perception. Blake certainly saw the age of reason that he was living through as one that had the potential to limit rather than to broaden one's awareness, and he used his art to visualise these concerns. He has positioned Newton underwater, perched on the rocky surface of an ocean bed. Behind him, the wonders of the natural world are revealed in these beautiful colour tones. But for Blake, Newton is oblivious to the wondrous and the mysterious that surrounds him. Instead, Newton shows a single-minded focus upon the parchment at his feet and the narrowing pinch of the compass. The use of the ocean in this artwork is an intriguing one. The seabed could refer to the hidden depths of perception that lurk much deeper than our rational senses. Nowadays, we would recognise this as the unconscious. Or maybe the decision to place Newton underwater could be a warning of how a fixation upon cold logic could lead to the more mystical aspects of humankind being silently drowned with a collective unawareness of its loss. In art history, purples and dark blues often symbolise the more mystical and otherworldly elements of life. Therefore, this colour scheme could be a reference to Blake's belief that these elements exist all around us, regardless of whether we are aware of them. Blake's distrust of science was matched by his dislike for the art establishment. He saw parallels in the focus upon reason and the naturalistic ideals being promoted by Sir Joshua Reynolds and the Royal Academy of Art. Blake described Joshua Reynolds' approach as being that of the vegetative eye and claimed that Locke and Newton were the true progenitors of Sir Joshua Reynolds' aesthetic. In this statement, he is linking his distrust for the Royal Academy's theories with the march of science. Both of these aspects he perceived to be forces of suppression. However, both Blake and Newton do share some parallels. Both were geniuses in their own fields, and they had ways of thinking that were groundbreaking and radical, even if they did so in different ways. Blake's Newton has inspired contemporary artworks. If you visited the British Library in London, then you may have come across this large sculptural form. It was created in 1995 by Edvardo Pelosi and is known as Newton or Newton after Blake. We can see this artwork as illustrating the search for knowledge which has inspired artists and scientists alike. Even if Blake's artwork was created as a criticism of what Newton stood for, in this medium it seems to celebrate Newton as a giant of science and progress. The sculptural form represents the solid, enduring wisdom of one of the greatest thinkers of all time. It is also a celebration of Blake and his artistic vision. Pelosi had first seen Blake's print of Newton at the Tate in 1940 and was mesmerised by the artwork. 
this reinterpretation of Newton seems to be combining the worlds of science and art, the rational and the visionary. As such, it fuses these different aspects together again, as they once were before they began to fragment into different camps. Blake always felt that these elements should never have been severed in the first place, so this artwork perhaps fulfils Blake's ideals about perception. William Blake is an exceptional artist. His imaginative imagery seems to leap from the page and is enriched through his symbolism. Blake may have been unrecognised by his contemporaries during his lifetime, but his art has now taken its rightful place in the canon of art. So that's it for this week, and I'll see you next week when we'll be taking a look at another beloved British artist, Turner. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.